right guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, as you can see, we got a new bike, new to me anyway. It's an 014 uh, Suzuki DR650. And these things have been around since, I think, the age of the dinosaurs. They've been around forever. Early 90s, I think, and uh, well, we're in 2022 now. I think they're still making them, and they remain pretty much unchanged since day one. Let's do a little quick walk around here. Uh, show you what the bike uh, kind of came with. I actually put this, um, this fender off a DRZ 400. I bought this DRZ 400 a couple weeks ago. It came with a different front fender. This is the stock front fender, and I like the look of it a little bit better than this. Um, this thing's like really plain Jane square, and I guess they're pretty flimsy from the factory, which is why this guy added this sheet metal piece, but this looks a lot better, I think. Um, it came with these Meyer Barkbuster hand guards with the aluminum uh, hand guards in there. What else? Uh, fly racing bars with one inch risers, so that's nice. I took these mirrors off of the DRZ over here just because this had stock mirrors on that were like eight or 10 inches tall. Well, they're right here. And you can see just how tall those were. I think they actually have an extension piece on because a lot of people complain that they're actually too short from the factory. Um, came with a Moose Racing rear rack. This little Suzuki bag, which is handy. Put your registration or whatever in here. Um, you know, a couple drinks or whatever. Um, Exhaust is all stock. Carburetor has been jetted to complement a airbox mod, which is basically removing the snorkel and drilling a few holes in the airbox lid to let more air into it. I would like to do some sort of a muffler or slip on at some point. Oh, and it also has the Moose Comfort Seat, I believe. I'm not sure exactly what model it is, but this is a huge improvement over the stock seat. These are Moto Z tractionator wheels or uh, tires and um, I don't know I'd say they're probably geared a little bit more towards the road probably 60 40 or so if not even a little bit more the back ones it's not awful but you're not you're not riding in any mud or anything like that with that so I'm gonna probably end up putting a little bit more on off-road gear tire on this bike um, when I get a chance um, these are air-cooled 650cc engines. They're dual spark plug. What else? Oh, so a lot of people complain that the suspension is way too soft on these from the factory. This did come with aftermarket front springs. Here's the factory springs here. Um, and I think the rear shock is stock, but I haven't verified that yet. It also has a 49 tooth rear sprocket on it, which I believe is larger than the factory. I believe it comes with a 42 tooth rear sprocket because I have one sitting over here that came with the bike and it says 42 on it. Um, I'll verify that. Other than that, the guy before me put some nice LED blinkers on that kind of stay out of the way a little bit better than the factory ones. And uh, I took the rear passenger uh, foot pegs off and um, just a couple other minor things put my quad lock mount phone mount on there so that when I get my case for my new iPhone 12 I can pop that on and use it for navigation so um, let's take this thing uh, let's do a little off-roading and see how it does on some single track out here and then we'll go hit the roads and see how the road manners are for Shift up. 
still got the low end torque to pull you out of the corner. this section but I don't know if I'm gonna flip through here where these tires kind of suck because I have no traction to pop the front end up over that log.
bike is. I'm really liking it. Uh, it does everything that I want it to do. Does it do everything I want it to do extremely well? No. You know, I wish it had some more power when you're on the roads, um, but it does handle corners and uh, it is very comfortable. And if you're not going down a four lane highway, um, you're just cruising back roads, this bike's gonna, this bike's gonna do it for you all day long with no issues. Um, it does good off road. Um, you know, I wanna get some different tires on, so when it's wet out, and obviously at the beginning of this video, when I was trying to pop the front end over that log, I couldn't do it because these are pretty much flat on the uh, on the rear tire. The top of the rear tire is, is just flat, so there's no traction to get your front end up when you're in an off-road situation like that. So um, that would be extremely helpful. And um, the bike doesn't feel as heavy as, as what it is. It doesn't feel like a 330 pound bike to me riding it in the woods. It is definitely a lot heavier than my KTM 150 that's right over here. Um, but I didn't feel like I was struggling to um, weave it in and out of those tight sections at all. Um, when you get it stuck, you're gonna know it a lot faster than pushing the 150 out of a situation like that. But um, yeah, no, no real complaints there yet. Um, obviously, I don't have it all loaded up with pannier bags and, and racks and luggage and all that. But um, for right now, it was actually pretty enjoyable on the trails. Um, and it wheelies really nicely. I would almost say it likes to have the front end in the air as much as the uh, DRZ 400 Supermoto over here, which was extremely surprising to me. I did not expect that. Um, it's, it, it, it's very well balanced flight. It's smooth power, so it really was not that hard for me to hop on and just start riding wheelies with it. So I think the advantages of this over something like, you know, if I, I was actually looking at a Teneri 700, I was looking at the um, Africa Twin, and I'm not saying I'll never end up with one of those bikes, but what I will say is, this will do probably anything those will do, just not quite as good. It, you know, it's not gonna, you're not gonna wanna ride this, you know, on a cross country trip, um, as soon as you wanna ride one of those. They're, they're gonna be more comfortable, they're gonna um, have better road manners probably, and they're gonna have a lot more power than something like this. This will do that, it just won't do it quite as well and it's one third of the price. I paid four, right around four grand, $4,200 for this. You're gonna pay three times that for an Africa Twin or a Tenere 700. Um, the other thing I like about this lower priced bike, besides not having to pay $12,000 is, I can take this off road, I can dump it, I can you know, knock it off a couple trees or whatever, and I'm not gonna feel bad about it like I would with a brand new Africa Twin or a Tenere. Pretty cool um, to be able to do that. And the other thing is, it's like around 50 miles per gallon. So nice to have something I can commute, commute back and forth to uh, work on and be comfortable on. And uh, I think um, hopefully it'll pay for itself in that, in that respect. So anyway guys, lots more videos to come on this. Um, I'm sure I'll find more things that I like and dislike about this bike. And uh, I'll share all those with you guys, but probably do a bunch of cool rides that uh, I'll bring you along for. So uh, catch you guys in the uh, in the future videos. Thanks for watching.